following the link in the description, you can find a comprehensive course where I speak in detail about each prelude covering topics like technique, technique optimization, learning strategies, uh, interpretational options, fingering, pedaling, and many, many other uh, useful topics. So if you're uh, considering or if you're working on this set, uh, you might find a lot of useful information there. And for those of you who are new on this channel, I would like to remind you that I also do teach online. So if you guys are interested in a personalized approach, if you are interested to study with me, uh, just contact me following the link in the description. So how we can uh, approach this piece? There are a few important tips uh, I wanted to share with you. So tip number one, uh, I would strongly suggest you to start learning this piece in a very comfortable tempo, uh, optimizing your technique. But nevertheless, uh, we don't play in a slow tempo just for the sake of, of slow tempo. We always play in a certain tempo for purpose. So slow tempo serve us serves us for optimizing technique, for consciously optimizing our movements, coordinating them. I would avoid playing this piece mechanically. I would always uh, work on it very consciously. So even when you play uh, slowly, you nevertheless have a set of goals that you track. For example, not lifting fingers. So this is a very bad way to play this piece. If you play like that, you are not going to advance too far because, first of all, when you lift your fingers, you cause a so-called co-contraction of muscles when you use flexors and, and extensors uh, at the same time. And this is a very dangerous uh, habit which uh, quite quickly leads to uh, overuse issues, uh, pain in the um, muscles and so on. <clears throat> but also, uh, each time when you drive your finger away, you need some time for that. So at the end, your tempo will will get slower. So uh, your first and primary task is uh, to start working this piece um, in a comfortable tempo with a comfortable dynamics, let's say mezzo forte, and just making sure that you can transfer the weight from finger to finger, avoiding lifting the fingers and immediately releasing each finger when you're done. And doesn't matter how slow this tempo will be, you just have to consciously form this habit. And tracking down each curve, each uh, finger position where you feel yourself not really confident and uh, clumsy and trying to find an efficient way to play it. Then uh, I would suggest you start working from a comfortable dynamics rather than a forte just because uh, working like that you can uh, work with the bottom of the key and form good reflexes. Avoid uh, pushing the keys but nevertheless seek for a gentle support, support sensation in your fingers. Always stable fingers. Each finger feels the bottom of the key. But as faster you go, as less, um, less support you have, as lighter you play. So at the end, this, feel, this piece should feel as glissando, like that should feel really light. And the whole piece we are playing extremely lightly. So this is very important. When you get to uh, extreme speeds, you have to play very lightly. You should have very light sensation in your, um, in your fingers. But some sporadic spots of gasoline, of course, are necessary, especially when you have such curves. Of course, you can add some woo, woo, some very extreme, like turbulent crescendo, which will make this piece um, very crazy and really impressive. But you do them using the weight of the arm. So you just apply a bit more weight to these fingers, but you don't, uh, you don't really work more. So your task is to work as much just applying a bit more weight here. Uh, when you play so lightly, when you play glissando-like, when you play that lightly, uh, you can't go to the bottom of the key uh, for each key, of course. Otherwise, your tempo will uh, decrease and you will feel some heaviness. But uh, you can't uh, play all the keys equally lightly because that would lead to tension and lose control over the keyboard. You still need to feel good support in the keys uh, when you play piano. That's why uh, in such extreme passages, 
we um, we use sporadic leaning points, and when you practice, you can assign one leaning point for a hand position. You see, so there are some keys that are lighter and some keys where I try to play a little bit deeper in the key. I don't accent them, but I just feel support in that key. Mm. Of course, then you reduce that sensation because um, the piece is really extreme, so you have to play everything lightly. But working uh, with these leaning, leaning points uh, and working generally with good support in the fingers will get you closer to the goal of playing that lightly and nevertheless feeling yourself comfortable, feeling that you really control what you're doing. Then, of course, uh, using different learning methods. Use your fantasy. You can invent as much uh, as you want. I can share with you my favorite uh, ways to learn this piece. So, of course, this is rhythmical learning. When you uh, apply different types of dotted rhythms, It's uh, very helpful because it helps you to boost your reflexes really well. You just have to do it right. You have to um, provide very good equal accentu accentuations for two notes, pop them, and immediately release the fingers. Immediately, and you have you use that time after the long note in order to get a feedback: Am I re relaxed or not? Did I succeed to play that precisely? Did I succeed to feel myself comfortably? And did I succeed to release the finger to free up the hand right after the blow? Release, release, ta -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. and never compromising um, the precision of rhythm. Pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum, pa -dum. Should be a very sharp, very precise dotted rhythm. Never getting, uh, and never allowing yourself to play loosely or approximately. So this uh, exercise, uh, this learning method is to training an ultimate quality that's why we have to also stay conscious when we practice like that or for example uh, sporadic um, learning when you play for example just uh, one beat till the beginning of the next beat mm. 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 also with the left hand mm. only till the next strong beat um, this is a good learning method because you can loop a uh, problematic spot. If you have a problematic turn somewhere, um, if you have a, uh, some spot that it gives you a hard time, you just loop it and you can control that you can control what's happening instead of playing the whole passage, because usually uh, th there is just one or two spots in a passage that stumble you. The rest of the passage uh, should go well if you, if you generally have technique to play this piece. So uh, this approach helps you to, to target problems, especially it's helpful in a spot like in, like in bar 24. And, and then you, you don't uh, rush playing it next time, you reflect what you have just played. What, what Was it good? Was it precise? Did I feel myself comfortable? Do I need to play it slowly a couple of times? Or not? Did I manage to release uh, fingers quickly? And so on. So this is a very analytical work, a very conscient one. It's not really useful to play this piece mechanically because then you lose concentration. And uh, when you get on stage, you are not trained to be able to immediately react on what's happening.